Hi there. Hope you've all had a good evening or afternoon or even morning. Right, we've got a new case today. It's um, about a 15-year-old Sebastian is his name. He is. He suffered. He had, he has special needs and he's five foot five, brown hair, brown eyes. He's from Hendersonville or Nashville. Can you see you, sir? He was last seen on the 25th, the 2nd, 2024. This is the young lad we're looking at. has got special needs so they've had to speak to people who understand the special needs of this child and what they can do how to approach it and they found out he likes the mood the song he likes cats and he likes the song eye of the tiger good choice i love that song and so during the search they've been playing that song but the thing is we were a child a child with special needs all the noises all these different sounds it can be over over stimulating for him and it won't help plus he hasn't had his medication which won't help either but his parents said he's more active on the night time and tends to sleep during the day. Which is a problem for them in a way because they've got to get him to sleep so they can get him to school the next day. So, but he's more active. So they're hoping like, he's more active, he's been more active during the night and during the day he's just sleeping somewhere. But children of his needs also tend to go for water because it helps to stimulate what is missing it helps them calms them down and i've got a grandson who hasn't been diagnosed yet but i've always said he's got something like adh or autism anything like that because and he loves his baths and he just loves to, once the bath is full, just to sit there, sit in the bath. He's got his tablet resting on the side, not right by the bath, but across from the bath. And he just sits in the bath, chilling out. And I have to check on him because he did once fall asleep. So I have to check on him to make sure he's okay. And he's still in there, just sitting there in the bath full of water. watching his tablet and those are the two things that keep him that calm him down relaxes him and you can have up to three baths a day when he's at mine honest to god it's like grand having a bath but you had one this i want to have one i'm dirty it's not it's not it just likes to have a bath so children with these special needs he needs he likes they like water so if he's feeling confused or over anxious or is and there's too much noise around he could go towards water which will help calm him apparently he went out during the night now you could say okay why didn't the parents have the door locked they did but he's 15 years old a child like this of that age it doesn't matter what, what needs he what what special needs he is they know they understand how to unlock doors but he walked out the house on the night time because when his mum got up in the morning he wasn't in his bed 
so really they're getting a rock time he left the house so really he could have had a good six hours by the time the mother got up you know what i mean so it all depends how far how many hours it was how late it or early it was during the morning from when they went to bed to when they got up what what time we went out but i don't know i just don't know what time we left otherwise i just stopped him anyway this is the area we're looking at Oh, come on. Hold on. I'm just going to move this picture out of your way. This is the area we're looking at. Right. Now, just look at all that greenery, the woods, the forests, the trees. Right. If he's managed to get down here, look at it all. All that there. They've got to search all that. And they've got to search any rivers. Check the rivers. Because as I said, they are they do tend to go towards water. Because especially on the night time, you might, have you ever seen a, a lake or a river on the night time when the moon's hitting it? Shimmers. Right, so it, they have to check all the water things. And I'm not seeing, seeing any water as such around here. But I know when I punched in a certain thing, what was it I punched in? Was it uh, one of them? It showed me a lake. So I know there's a lake around there somewhere, but I'm trying to find it. You know what I mean? But it all depends which way he went as well. Like if he went along Long Hollow Pike and rode towards, what, uh, where is that? I don't know, north east. Is that north up there, east, west, south? You know what I mean? In the night, there's not many people about. So they're relying on door cameras as well. If anyone has a door camera. Look, see around here, it's all very sparse. Not many houses. But there's some, there's like a housing estate thing here. But it's not that busy. It's not that packed. It's not loads of houses there. You know what I mean? There's not loads of houses there. But his friend who goes who's in his class has said that he loves to go by the water and hide and sit behind buildings, sheds, old sheds there and everything. So that was helpful because oh there's one. There's one. Pond, river, pond. So that that will have been searched, or hopefully will be searched. Do you know what I mean? Because I don't know where about he lived, but say he lived here. That pond isn't that far. Right, is that a river or is it um looks like a river, doesn't it? I don't know. It might just be like a pathway. Yeah, it looks like a driveway to some house or something. See, it's in the middle of the woods, these houses are. So they need to be checking every outbuilding. Look, even if you've got over here, look at this. You know what I mean? 
it's got as far away as this. There's buildings here in the trees. Very hard to see them. So even if you got over that far, there's nothing saying you couldn't. Because he had a good few hours ahead before anyone noticed he was gone. You know what I mean? But I can't, I can't understand why he would leave the safety of his home at night. You know what I mean? Because all people with autism don't like change. They really don't. They don't like anything to be different from when it was before. Right? So it's like um, if you're going to do a child's bedroom, talk to them about it first because they will tell you what they like and what they don't want because they don't like change. So if you've got to get them a new bed, talk to them and say, look, we need to get you a new bed. What sort of bed would you like? And if they say, but I like this bed, say, well, we can buy you a new bed like this. You know what I mean? They don't like change. And some don't like wearing shoes. Some don't like wearing tags in the clothes. It's horrendous. But they, they are very clever children as well. Very clever. So if all this noise going on around him, and here, he could be hiding anywhere. He could have climbed up a flipping tree. He could be sitting in a tree. No, I don't know if there's a river there. No, that's not a river. But that is a big area they've got to cover. You know what I mean? Now, look over here. They've got a more built up, is it more built up around here? Yeah, more built up area around here. But that will take, but then again, saying that will take them a long time. It all depends. How, how long have you had walking? Did you go along this long hollow road, hollow pike road, and towards? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You don't know. So anyway, I've got two videos to show you. And which they are asking for help. Okay? So if anyone watches this on replay, is in this area. Please help them out. Right. Let's watch this first. Now I can get my mouse to work. Right. Tonight, law enforcement racing to find a missing teenage boy, extending their search well past sunset. It has been almost 24 hours since anyone has seen 15-year-old Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. The TBI issued an endangered child alert this afternoon. Now, several agencies have been out combing the area around Sebastian Sumner County home, and they haven't stopped yet. News 2's Sarah Smith is live tonight in the beach area of Hendersonville. And Sarah, I know it's dark out there, but the search crews, they continue their work. Bob and Haley, it's all hands on deck at this point. This community out searching in their cars, ATVs, and on foot for Sebastian. We know Sebastian is autistic. Investigators say he was last seen in the beach, Shackle Island area. He's likely wearing a black sweatshirt and pants. He's five foot five and about 120 pounds. They have a helicopter up right now searching the area. And a dive team was here this afternoon checking bodies of water. Deputies also want you to check your ring doorbell cameras or security cameras in case you see Sebastian. Now we're told that his family is at home hoping for the best. Live in Hendersonville, Sarah Smith, News 2. Right, we've got that one, and then we've got this one. This one tells you a lot more, and it is longer. 
Today is what I'll describe as a redundant search. We have mapped out more search grids, sent responders out to search specific grids. They search that area, they clear it, they come back, they get another search grid and they go back out. Um, yesterday, we, for lack of a better term, we threw everything that we possibly could throw at this. Um, I'll show you a picture of the map in just a moment. We absolutely obliterated covering the area where Sebastian could have walked off to. Um, obviously there's a litany of things that could have happened to Sebastian and none of them we can uh, presume are credible or validate yet. So we're doing everything we can. Uh, every lead that we get, we're following. Um, if someone calls and says, hey, I think we saw him by the pond, we're going to the pond and checking. Um, nothing's off the table at this point. Okay, and I guess the priority has it moved from a two perimeter search right to mile perimeter to now how wider? We're, we're at about five mile width right now. We keep, as we clear the areas, we keep expanding. Um, we do get calls and tips from time to time, and we take some of the teams we have here, respond to that area, uh, and either cooperate or invalidate the, the tip. Okay, great. Um, and, and we know that you guys earlier were saying that not discouraging the public from coming out. Is that still the same message now? So right now we have enough first responders on the ground here that we can communicate with. That's something they have that we use to track. And um, there's there's a litany of reasons that it's important right now. There may come a time when we call on the public to come out and help us search. But right now we have plenty of first responders on scene. The best thing the public can do to help us is keep sharing it on social media. If you see something, say something, call the Sumner County Emergency Communication Center at 615-451-3838 and check your home surveillance video. Just check. If you see something, call us. We'll come out and look. Um, I think that that's going to be what breaks the case is somebody's home surveillance video seeing something. Okay. And at what point are people going to be coming out and invited to come out in the searches? I know a lot of people They absolutely are. Um, Sumner County is the greatest place on earth. I truly believe that. We have the absolute greatest distance here. But we also have the best law enforcement relationships in the county. We, we've got people from across the state here, the TBI, Tennessee Highway Patrol, Hendersonville's here, Yalta City people. We have plenty of first response. So my, my urge to the public right now would be to check your home videos and stay rested because when the call comes, we'll put it out on social media and that's when we'll need you to come. Okay. Um, and then, are, did you speak as well? Okay, I'm going to get you mic'd up here. In the Meantime, um, is when you approach this, um, when you approach this search, is it different looking for a child than an adult? Uh, it's definitely different looking for a child with autism. Yesterday, we consulted with uh, someone in the first responder world who does emergency management, who also has children who are autistic, uh, and she kind of laid it out for us some things that I didn't understand or comprehend at first. Uh, she gave us a lot of tips and tricks. So uh, we've had several calls from people with autistic relatives that have told us, hey, have you thought about this? And listen, there's nothing off the table. If I don't care how crazy it sounds. If, if it's going to help me find Sebastian and get him home safe to his family, I'm going to do it. And I mean, what are some of those considerations that go into looking for a child with autism? Some of the things that he likes, but he's really good for that and likes cats. Uh, we were told that his favorite song is I Have a Tiger. We tried playing that to, to just kind of call him and let him know we're here to help him. Uh, I, I'm sure that he could see what's going on here and be intimidated, but if he sees this newscast, I want him to know, Sebastian, come out. We're here to help you. We just want to get you home safe. Um, and at this point, have you guys ruled out any indication of foul play? I won't say that we've ruled out any indication of foul play, but I will say the family's had nothing but with us. Um, nothing but quality. There, there's no there's no indication of foul play at the moment. Okay. How have those tips been of people coming in and offering up any information? Have you guys had any leads or any information they can share with us? We've had several tips. Uh, one of the tips was that he decided off the of Newman's Trail off the Longhawk. Pike. We actually, when we got that tip, we sent a team out. We made contact with who they thought was Sebastian, and it was not. Um, again, that's a great tip. It could have been. So if somebody sees something, call us. Let us know. And do you guys know, I know you guys were checking June last night to see if he was that still the case. Is he barefoot? Because I know on Facebook somebody posted a picture of these could be his shoes. Um, or is that something he is supposed to be barefoot? What I can say is that his mom says all of his shoes are accounted for at the house. Um, I'm not going to say that he's barefoot. 
Um, and how is how's the family doing? Just to ask, I'm checking in with them. Oh, I cannot imagine the struggle that the family is going through right now. Um, I'm a dad. Director Widener's a dad. Um, I just, I don't know how. I don't know how they're handling it. I couldn't. I couldn't survive if something happened to my kids. Managing all of this, um, what's been going through your guys' mind? Just kind of juggling all of these people um, and having people come in from outside agencies as well. I mean, what's been going through your mind? Well, I think Director Widener said it best. Uh, every time we debrief and talk about what we've done, we're asking, "What ideas do you guys have?" Because you know. Uh, I think I'm a pretty good law enforcement officer, but I'm not the smartest guy in the room, and I know that. So if someone's got an idea, and we've had some pretty good ideas come up, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna try everything we can. So uh, keeping an open mind and doing anything we can to find some fashion. Um, and then I also am told that he might be on medications as well due to his autistic being on the autistic spectrum. Um, what is that kind of looking like, and is that kind of upping the the danger of the situation? It definitely increases the volatility of the situation. The medicine was there, uh, obviously to treat his autism. So how he responds to that once the medicine is out of the system is really not my expertise, but I do know that it's gonna have a negative effect on him. So uh, it definitely is increasing. And then as people approach him, if they see him, are they advised to move slowly or call you guys first? Or I guess what's the, what's the recommendation? I would definitely say call us first. Uh, if you're close enough to talk to Sebastian, talk in a calm, slow voice. Let him know that you're you're not there to hurt him. You're there to help him. Uh, and hopefully you can build a rapport with him until we can get there and, and bring him back to his family. About how many agencies are helping with this search? Oh, we've got at least 10 agencies here. Yesterday, and Director Wadner. Um, and I'm Kim Wadner, K-E-N-W-E-I-D-N-E-R, Director of Sona County Emergency Management Agency. So yesterday we had uh, multiple agencies. We have 220 searches on the ground, and we we bring them in and we go back to their operations, and they get assigned to search areas. So we're using a, a search program to track them, and we actually they lay tracks uh, from their cell devices, and we we know where they're at, and uh, and and they complete those search areas. They come back, and they get reassigned or we reassign them there in the field. So. Today, we'll get a count on that, but I say we're over 150 searches on the ground today, and multiple agencies, and, and you know, uh, TSP helicopter, uh, chief went over, uh, Metro's helicopter, TBI fixed wing, over 10 drones, we've got uh, 12 K-9 teams here, uh, eight mounted units yesterday, forces yesterday, and 10 here today, so we're covering as much ground as we can, and uh, we keep expanding that search area. And we have literally, we have pounded the area, the neighborhood that, that he went missing from, and the neighborhood adjacent, and we keep expanding that out. And with the anticipation of the temperature dropping tomorrow and tomorrow, a chance for storms, is that going to change the search, or is it going to have any impact on his ability to survive? We're, we're, we're concerned about the weather because we don't know exactly what he's dressing in, and we could have some flurries tomorrow. And the, the storm, so the wet, and, and you lose body temperature 30 times faster when you're wet uh, than when you're dry in the air or in water. And uh, so we're concerned about that. And the chance that we could have flurries tomorrow and those dropping temperatures. So um, <clears throat> we'll continue to work, work with drones and FLIR. And, uh, and we've actually utilized tactical teams, SWAT teams, the county ERT, and night vision that our, that our operators have. And they've been in, they've been in the field. Uh, for many hours at night time. Yeah, that was my next question. Um, how do you guys just operate these searches at night? I know last night they got dark too soon and it's going to get dark too soon from today again. But how does those searches go in and how do you keep those protected? Yeah, flashlights, clear, and not good. Yeah, I'll say we, we change our tactics based on the weather. So last night we did that. Uh, not not ready yet to describe exactly how we did that because we may have to apply that again tonight or tomorrow night. Yeah. Kind of talking about it earlier, the body. But, like, are you expecting at this point you're tired of exhausted sleeping? I mean, like, I guess what kind of disgusting. That, uh, teenagers are resilient. Um, we're hoping he'll help. He has enough clothes on to stay warm. And uh, we think that when he gets fatigued, um, he should dress. And, uh, um, he doesn't, uh, apparently doesn't sleep a lot at night, 
and, and he's more active at night and, and, and you know, uh, probably sleeps a little more in the day. So we hope he's, he's laying down resting and, and uh, we just want to, um, we don't want him to outwalk the search and the the ground that he can cover um we're you know we're, we're working with that and we're putting that into consideration when we when we create the areas that we search could you do something else the there's multiple agencies tbi's helped metro nashville's helped tennessee Highway patrol's helped our drone team north star has helped wilson county is going to come help with some aerial coverage <clears throat> Uh, the Summer County Emergency Management Drone Team has been phenomenal. Uh, there's there's really no limit. If there's a resource out there that can help us, we've called and we've asked for it. Uh, uh, pretty much every county in the every agency in the county, and then counties from from across the state. Quite honestly, um, and you know, with the plea, and I think I heard Chief talking about that earlier. You know, we have a lot of people want to volunteer, and and we are really looking to put trained uh, personnel on the ground that. Um, um, are familiar with search and, and operations and have the ability to uh, perform limited rescue operations. And we've got teams on standby if we, if we have a rescue situation. And uh, so there's a lot that goes into that and we, um, we can track these personnel a, a, a lot easier, so. Are divers still on scene as well? They're on standby. They're on standby. They're on standby. Um, is there anything else that you guys Continue to share the social media page. If you see something, your home surveillance video, those are really the huge things that the public can do to help us right now find Sebastian. Uh, we had a child walk up, a lady walk up today with a child who's autistic. They're from Watertown, and the little boy wanted to tell us where he thought Sebastian could be. And he told me very, um, um, very forthright where he thought he would go if he were lost, that he would go towards creeks and he would go behind buildings and, and the different things that he would do. And he told his mom this morning that he wanted to come up here and, and tell us where he, th he thought Sebastian might be. Right, so. More than a week after they went missing, because. police in Australia believe they have recovered the body. All right, so that's what we've got so far. Right, so not a lot of information, but enough information that they they are relying on uh, doorbell cameras, really, and any other cameras like street cameras and things like that that pick him up on there. They know he was spotted at around a certain area, so they know where which way he was going but like i said he's not been he's not had his medication which won't help won't help at all so uh i think tbi have got on there i don't i can't say this far. uh i've got it on there let's have a look uh, oh God. Yes, it is. Right, I'll share this. I'll share this. This, this is the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. I, I shared this. Right. It's now gone from an endangered to an amber alert has been issued. For 15 year old Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers on behalf of the Summer County Sheriff's Office. Based on additional information, investigative information developed during the search for Sebastian, an Amber Alert is being issued. Here's some more photos of him. It's very distinctive, his face, you know what I mean? So, there's more photos of him anyway. 
so please if anyone is knows lives in this area knows anyone in that area knows this lad please get into the tbo right tbo or some county sheriff's office i haven't got any, there was a number yes the number is tips S C S O Summer County what would that stand for? Summer County Sheriff's Office. Summer County Sheriff's Office at six one five four five one three eight three eight or one dash eight hundred TBI find. I'll read it again. SCSO contact SCSO at six one five four five one three eight three eight or one eight hundred TBI find. If anyone sees this lag, knows this lag, approach him calmly. Don't go running up to him. Don't go shouting his name, oh, because it'll just scare him, and he'll just run. Walk up to him and say, oh, hello. You know what I mean? But they have said if they see him, to phone them first. Right? But if you feel like... Okay, you phone John, but then you think, oh, look, he's going to get away from me. Just try and make contact with him, but do it gently. Do it quietly. But there's this picture again. And as I said, it was, I didn't think this would be a long one because I haven't got that much information on it yet but we'll go to the maps again right this is where we lived round this way i believe well that's where we've seen round that way i'm not sure but from what i can understand when i read heard about it you've got all this greenery it could be in there in there it could be up in the trees sitting up in a tree somewhere so it's not just a matter of looking on the ground you've got to look up in the trees as well because you've got to remember this is a 15 year old lad it's not a baby it's a 15 year old lad who will know how to climb trees you know what i mean if he gets scared and he doesn't know where he can go he'll go upwards he'll go up the tree he'll go up the tree Right, no, they've got all that, and then you've got all these woodlands here, all these here. He's managed to get over that way. But I don't, they said he was seen on a long hollow pipe. But that could be that way, or it could be this way. But he's got, if he's gone that way, he may, look at, may not look for that far, but it's a fair distance, but... As I said, he's got a few hours on him. So it depends on what time he was spotted. You know what I mean? So hopefully, let's pray that he is found. Let's just pray he is found. And that no harm has come to him. See what I mean? It's just so dense. You've got all these little. Don't you got some there, like a house there, and some here, and that looks like a dirty green muddy river pond. But the divers they haven't brought out yet. They've got them there, but they haven't used them yet. 
Uh, I've just said you fish go along this road, you could dive into the water anywhere along here. Or if he's going that way. You've got wooded area here, you've got open fields, wooded area. Walk across there, open land, and then you've got all this area. It's amazing how far, uh, it's amazing how far a three-year-old can walk, believe me. So you imagine a 15 year old, I used to walk three miles to school, three miles home, and still have plenty of energy to go and walk around for hours and hours and hours. You know what I mean? So they can walk a fair distance without getting tired. Especially if he's a night time person, he'll be more active during the night, so he walk further during the night. So if he's been walking during the night, he might be sleeping during the day. So we just got to hope that he is found and got home to his family. Now I understand there's a press release coming soon. Right. So... Right, so once again, they are looking for. Oh, come on, get off there. Get off. Get off, right. They are looking for this lad. His name is Sebastian. What was his? I can't remember his full name. <coughs> Sebastian. Oh, Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. He's 15 years old, autistic. He was seen today near Stafford Court in Hengistville. Where's Stafford Court? I'm going to pop it in here. Hengistville. Hengistville. Right. Let's have a look. Where is he? Oh, so. He was seen round here. So he was last seen round there somewhere. Right. But like I said, Christ. If he went that way, he's up into trees and where and open fields and spark, sparkly houses. Look. He was last seen. Um, Stuffy Court, was he? Yeah. <laughs> it was last seen round there. Yeah. Stafford Court. So it's obviously this court on a door camera. Right? So was he going down this way? And then to walk there? Or did he go that way? Or did he go straight across into the trees? Do you know what I mean? We don't know. And that's what they are looking at now. So, anyway, he's got, he's five foot five, brown hair, brown eyes. If you have any information, contact SCSO at 615 
four five one three eight three eight for one eight hundred TBO point. Uh, that's the lag we're looking for. Okay, looking for. So please, if you're watching this on replay, share it. Comment. Give it a like. It's all free. And if you really want, subscribe. That way, you won't miss any of the lives. You'll be first to see it, first to hear it. Before it goes on to Twitter. Okay, so until then, this is a short one, but it's but I did just pop on just to let get this out there. So if anyone can help, please, you can help just by sharing this. By liking it, by leaving a comment, and if you really feel like it, then subscribe to my YouTube channel. Anyway, thank you all. See you soon. I might be back on. I don't know yet. We'll see what this uh, update is from the police. Okay? So I'll see you soon. Bye.
Thank <laughs> you. 